Welcome to the Cryptcast, where we explore the dark and twisted world of horror cinema. I'm your host, Mr. Hyde, and with me is my co-host, The Origin. Hello. Before we start, we, uh, we need to talk about our disclaimer for spoilers. Yes. Um, if you have not seen either one of these movies uh, and you do not want to be spoiled, um, we recommend um, going away, watching the movie first, and then come back and enjoy the podcast. Or if you don't mind spoilers, or have you already seen the films, then um, enjoy the podcast. Today, we are bringing you two festive movies. Um, one, a classic family uh, tradition, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And the other one, I guess, you know, I guess you could call this one a family-orientated movie, too, because it is kind of family-ish, isn't it? Bell, Book, and Candle? Yeah, I'd say it's a it's a little bit more um, of, of an adult movie, perhaps a little bit more. I don't think... I don't think there's anything that you that kids wouldn't want to see, but I think it's it's definitely a, of the same ilk. Um, so maybe like Santa Claus is coming to town, you'd have on earlier, you know, for the kiddos. And then um, yeah, this yeah. other one is wonderful. It's a wonderful romantic comedy, supernatural, um, just just a joy, a real joy based upon, you know, who was in it and the time that it was made. It's just superb. And it's um, James Stewart at his best. I'm, I'm not a dramatic James Stewart. It's boring James Stewart. But if he's <laughs> he's doing a comical role, he's perfect at comic timing. You know, his facial expressions and everything else. You know, that's the James Stewart that I like. Yeah, and I'll touch on that a little bit more when we talk more in depth about this one. Yeah, because I, I had an observation mm -hmm. about him as well. All right, so we are going to talk about the first movie because we just got finished watching that over on the e movie show. And the um, link yeah. to that will be in the description be below if you missed that one. But we are talking, of course, about the 1970 classic Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Yeah, and there's just something about the claymation Christmas classics of that time. They are just so sweet and so charming. And they just bring back wonderful memories. Uh, and if you're not familiar with it, Santa Claus has come into town. Uh, was again from the ninety was was uh, put out in 1970, and it is uh, done in the style of stop motion animation. Uh, it was a children's television special produced by Rankin Bass Productions in New York City. The film is narrated by the absolutely wonderful Fred Astaire and stars the voices of Mickey Rooney. Keenan Wynn, Roby Lester, Joan Gardner, and Paul Fries, as well as an assistant song performance by the Westminster Children's Choir. Um, it basically tells the story of how Santa Claus uh, and several other Santa Claus related Christmas traditions came to be. Uh, it's based on the hit Christmas song that everybody knows called Santa Claus is Coming to Town, which was written by J. Fred Coots and Haven Gillespie for Leo Feist Incorporated and introduced on radio by Eddie Cantor in 1934 and the story of St. Nicholas. So I don't know if you want to mention the... So, mention so you better not out and you better not shout because Santa Claus yeah. <laughs> is completely wrong. <laughs> yes, I still remember my mom singing that to me when I was little. Uh, it just and it was on every Christmas, uh, and all through that, you know, I, I can just still remember those being on on TV. So again, just an absolute classic. I I have to say I was shedding a few tears watching it because it it just it just brings back those great memories. Yeah, I remember sitting around 
because when I was growing up, we had one of those really big floor unit TVs. And I remember sitting on the floor in front of the TV watching this one and Rudolph. Yeah. Uh, and the, um, the snowman, Frosty the snowman. Oh my God, I can't wait, watch. Wait, I so can't even watch Frosty anymore because I just cry. <laughs> I always I'm cry. Still... When, even when I was like three or four years old, when Frosty gets melted. Oh my God. Me. Was that was like, like emotional. Yeah, I'm I'm scarred from that. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. So after a newsreel prologue uh, stating that the children around the world are prepping for the arrival of Santa Claus, a postman arrives named Special Delivery SD Clugger, who drives the Clugger, and, and he's introduced, and when his mail truck breaks down, he left, tells the story of Santa in response to several letters sent by children, which he opens, and that's against um, the law in Postman. Uh, you're not supposed to open up someone's mail. <laughs> he doesn't care. He's like, fuck, this is a children's show. I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> the story begins with a baby named Claus arriving at the doorstep of the Burgermeister. Burgermeister. Meister Meister Burger. Burger. Yeah, I had forgotten all about that. That cracked me up. The ill-tempered ruler of Somber Town. Bernard Meisterberger orders his minion, Grimsley, to take Claus to the orphanage. But on the way, a gust of wind blows the baby away and he hits a tree really hard. You think he probably would have cracked his skull open, but he manages <laughs> to live because this is a children's story. And a group of animals takes Claus to the Kringles. And you think the way that the animals threw Claus on top of the sleigh probably would have broke his neck. But again, this is a children, <laughs> children's story. So he manages you can tell to survive. We watch a lot of horror movies. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> the Kringle renames him Chris and raises him as their own teaching him the practice of making toys. And yeah. uh, I think that's pretty much self-explanatory. He grows up and he um, breaks the law, becomes a fugitive, so he has to become Saint Nick. Mm -hmm. And yep. then eventually the Burgermeisters die off, which I thought was quite interesting that they said they died off in a kid's movie, which you know indicates that they mm -hmm. ceased to exist in this natural world <laughs> yeah yeah and obviously uh, considering when this was made um you know there was still a lot of cold war um sentiment and and uh influence in certain types of programming so you had the burgermeister meister burger they all looked like you know they were dressed like you know nazi soldiers and things like that so they were the sort of bad guys and they were the ones you know he he was particularly bad and he he wanted everybody you know he did he, he, did, he outlawed anything to do with uh toys that children weren't allowed to have toys anymore um he burned a big pile of toys in the street which again i can remember how traumatizing that was <laughs> um it's just when it, you're a kid you're hiding all your books underneath the the couch or something to stop oh my god myself. yeah it could it could potentially explain why i can't walk past a shop with a toy in the window <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah there's some very heavy actually quite heavy themes in this that are cleverly couched in this particular style of animation and and light-hearted delivery and silly names and things like that but yeah there there are some quite heavy themes in it um and then we have the cast which was a fantastic cast i mean oh, fred astaire okay. is told and sung by you know the wonderful fred astaire mm -hmm. mickey rooney as santa claus mm -hmm. uh keenan uh keenan Wyatt, 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 yeah as uh as winter. The winter warlock and i i remembered him as well he was so scary yeah <laughs> yes he was and uh robbie lester roby robbie how'd Ruby. you pronounce it roby i'd say roby yeah as it's miss jessica. jessica um she was also um the singer voice of eva gardner in the aristocats in <gasps> rescuers really 
Yes, and was oh. the original Disney story reader uh, for Walt Disney Records. Oh, that's so nice. There, there was quite a voice acting um, cast in this, which I think is one of the the endearing things from this. Mm -hmm. um, it, notably, um, um, voice actor Paul Fries, who plays the Burgermeister. Yeah. He uh, was the voice of the assistant Grimsley as well. So I that noticed. goes to show you his acting talents, right? His voice talents. Yep. And well, he played. From the cross. Yeah. Uh, the little penguin was so cute. I mm -hmm. think he was called Topper. Yep. Uh, he played, he did the voices of some of the other animals, guards, um, a newsreel announcer, the Kringle brothers, just loads of different characters. Mm -hmm. And if we uh, want to geek out for a moment, he was the voice of Carr in Knight Rider. Oh my God, was he? Yeah. <laughs> he was the second voice of Carr. There was two oh, okay. Voices. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, Joan Gardner as Tanta Kringle, the grouchy store lady, female townspeople, and a couple of more voices as well. Um, going back to Keenan Wynn, his voice obviously, I, I remember that particular character very well in this, and it probably really like stuck with me, but years later. I started seeing him popping up in various TV shows and things like that. And many, many years later, seeing his name, I thought, who's that? You know, and I Googled him and I realized who it was. And I thought, my God, I've seen him in absolutely everything. And when I was having a look at his filmography and his, his TV work, he was actually in and that's where I recognized him from. I was like, oh, that's like an instant recognition was from the Kolchak movie where he plays the, the police um, captain that Kolchak keeps winding up. But he has like an anger issue and he's been going to these therapy classes to work on his anger issues. And of course, then he tangles with Kolchak and it, it all completely unravels. Wonderful actor. He's he's right up there with with my absolute favorite actors. Yeah, quite a um, quite a um, pedigree. So uh, we've yeah. got lots of songs in this as well. I'm not a big fan of like musical type stories, but there's something about the children's ones that kind of get a pass because mm -hmm. it's like. Um, Willy Wonka, same thing. Not a big fan of musicals, but loved that. Loved that. Um, a lot of the Disney movies, things like that. So the, these get a pass. Um, there's some songs, like if they were really sad, I couldn't, I, I can't listen to them because they really like make me really, really sad to hear them again. But there's some really cute ones in here as well. Put one foot in front of the other is one of my favorites. Yes. That was so cute. And where did that door come from? <laughs> That's what I want to know. It's like you start singing, all of a sudden this magical door shows up, pop, like one foot in front of the other. I thought it was great. Cool. Where's yeah. the kids movie? So who cares, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, this one always takes me back to a more simpler time as a kid. Yeah, definitely. Parents. We had one of those old floor models that, you know, was at least three feet long. Yeah, so <laughs> what's that? So we had one of these floor models that I, I always sat in front of it and on the floor and uh -huh. watched it with my family. This one, Rudolph and um, uh, Frosty the Snowman were the three big ones that I always mm -hmm. watched every year as a kid. Oh, yeah. So it takes you back. It does. It does. I watched all those as well. Yeah. Um, the reception for this film, uh, it has an aggregated review score of 93% based on 14 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Not a lot of reviews, really. But how can you review something that's just so, just represents so many childhoods, you know, 
it, it's it's just a classic, you know. I don't think uh, I think you could say if you have never seen it before and you didn't grow up, you know, in that generation, it might seem a bit dated to you. But it's it's just such a lovely story. Um, it had a critic consensus stating arriving with lighthearted cheeriness and the best musical numbers. Santa Claus is coming to town is a magical story told by charming wood figure animation. So there you go. And the, I think it was the wedding song that kind of brought a tear to my eye. I'm sitting at work and I'm watching it and all of a sudden I got, the, you know, getting all emotional and stuff. <laughs> sure enough, yeah. someone had to walk into my office, right? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. I'm just watching Santa Claus is coming to town. Leave me alone. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move on. <laughs> yeah, they do. They they get you every time. The, these were just just brilliant, brilliant classics. So if you haven't seen it, um, it, and you do like Christmas, if you if you love Christmas stories, very sweet ones, this is definitely one to watch if you've never seen it. I'd have to say this is my favorite one out of the Reagan of Bass Christmas ones. But I, 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 there's some I literally cannot watch anymore because they just, I just lose it. I just completely mm -hmm. lose my mind. But <laughs> yeah, this Rudolph's one. Rudolph's hard watch. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Rudolph and Frosty. I was just like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get so emotional melts. watching those. Yeah. 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 When Frosty melts, I turn into a blurbery mess myself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, nah, nah, I'm done. I'm done. I, I'll be in therapy if I watch those again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wait, Chris, young that. Chris Claus looks like Ron Howard. He does. He does. Definitely. I thought that was done on purpose. Because Ron Howard did a lot with Disney too, right? And there was a yeah. lot of Disney actors, voice actors that were part of the Pretty best. sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, going back to the animation style, there was something that I read out just before that mentioned um, stop motion wood animation. And the reason for that is it says a spe the special was created using Japanese stop motion animation called Animagic in which all the characters are made out of wood and plastic and animated via stop motion photography. So interesting technique. It gives them a, a very distinctive, um, janky kind of kind of style, but it, it's quite charming. Mm -hmm. Almost and like I love Marianne that little Nets penguin. What's string. that? Oh, it's almost like marionettes, but without the string. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Topper was cool. He was, he was a cute little penguin. He was so cute. Yeah. He took the left, like, the wrong turn at Albuquerque, though. He was, he was <laughs> at the South Pole and ended up at the North Pole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, a good one. I thought the, the narration was fun, especially the kids when they were talking to uh, Fred Astaire. Mm. Uh, yeah, that was cute. And I always laugh at the part where in the narration and uh, where he's, where Fred Astaire says um, he became a man. And then he got, the next line is, I'm a man now. <laughs> that was kind of funny. It's like something out of like um, airplane or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the voice over the warlock always scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I know. When it first shows up before that commercial break, I was always behind the sofa. Yeah, was like, oh, he was scared. Here, you know? He yeah. was. He was. <laughs> and um, the Brigamaster, he breaks his funny bone, which your funny bone is in your arm, but he manages yeah. to break his funny bone in his foot. And... Um, and it was kind of funny as a play on words because he wasn't very funny, but he breaks his funny bone. <laughs> <laughs> and then he jumps off the bed, even though he has a broken foot. Yeah. 
And he just bounces off. And he pirouettes, pirouettes as well. And it's just kind of funny. But it's a kid's movie, so who cares, right? Yeah, exactly. And Chris Kringle's song uh, comes across as a little uh, creepy these days, right? <laughs> when, uh, you know, when the kids are on his lap and it's like, oh, yeah, that was like, Ew. yeah, yeah. It's so just like, move on. This... move on. <laughs> time, time to cancel this movie. Huh. <laughs> and uh, the power of a choo choo train. Give the uh, oh, Mr. Warlock there the choo choo train and it turns into I yeah. know. I was just like, oh, how well, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> And every time uh, Claus talked to Topper, I was waiting for him to say, sounds like first syllable, because the way Topper communicated, sounds like they were trying to play charades. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then the Lady Jessica song, it was quite psychedelic. I mean, it was like we had a pound of mushrooms or something. We just <laughs> swallowed them whole, and all of a sudden we got some funky light thing going across the screen <laughs> like, Fuck you, man. that's far out <laughs> and then uh, she puts her hair down i thought that was quite funny Love yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it was the 70s so the start yeah. of the 70s and then there was um the rudolph reference i thought that was quite funny mm, yeah um the warlock loser reference I thought was hilarious. I'm not a loser after all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what else I got? Uh, the winter. Oh, the, every time they would say warlock, he would say winter, please. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was quite funny too. <laughs> and they kept up through the whole show. <laughs> oh, Mr. Warlock? No, no, it's winter, please. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a wonderful holiday special, and um, mm, to definitely. this day, you know, and we need these these days because you don't have anything like this anymore for kids growing up, do you? I I don't know. I mean, I honestly don't know. All I the things that I have seen, like bits and pieces of, you know, certainly wouldn't necessarily like appeal to me. Because I grew up in a totally different era, but do they have the same impact? I don't know. I don't know if they if they will be remembered. You know, it, it would be interesting to find out. Do they make kids, you know, shed those tears, um, or are have they moved on to the point where they're kind of a little bit unfazed now? I don't know. Because now you know you get like Santa Claus with Tim Allen and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. I yeah, mean, which isn't, those movies are good, but yeah, they're not yeah. as magical as these old movies. Yeah, it, they do. They have this sort of wonderful whimsy about them and and magic. So it, it's you do wonder if anything has been done since that you know can kind of touch that. Hopefully so. <clears throat> All right. I think we are time to move on to our second movie. Yeah. The, uh, wonderful Bell Book and Candle. Which yes. sort of just fell in my lap because I was looking for um, stuff for the channel to play for, for Christmas time. And then this one came up and I'm like, huh. Oh. Because I've never seen this movie before. This is my the first time ever watching this. Movie. Same here, yeah. And um, I thought, oh, okay. So it's on YouTube. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to get a copy, and I'm going to try to put it on my channel. But YouTube said, uh, uh, uh. so I'm not allowed mm -hmm. to put it on my. Even though it's on channel, I hate it when it happens. Anyways, oh it's, yeah, so, it's already on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this movie is uh, Bell Book and Candle. 1958 American Supernatural Romantic Comedy, directed by Richard Quinn. And uh, it's got some uh, fantastic actors in this one. James Stewart, Kim oh, Novak, yeah. Jack Lemmon, Ernie Kovacs, and Elsa Lanchester, the uh, Bride of Frankenstein. Herself. Yay! Yes, I know. I know. Which, what? You know, 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, what a, a, um, a pleasure it was to see her in something other than Bride of Frankenstein. That's not all I've ever seen her in myself. And me. And, and me. Her. So it, it's it's quite a shock when you realize it's her. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of like, oh. And, and you can see she had very distinctive eyes. She had very mm -hmm. piercing, um, large eyes. And, and it, it's very much still there when you see her in this. She's um, obviously quite a bit older. And she's, but she's still got the most wonderful presence, the most, you know, a really lovely screen presence. And she, she definitely steals a lot of the scenes that she's in for sure. She could play so, wonky really well, too. Yeah, it was lovely to see her in this. Um, I think she stole the show. I think, to be honest, she, I mean, you got Steve, uh, or it's James Stewart, and you got Kim Novak, but the star of this one, I think, was Elsa Chandler or you know, Elsa Fitzgerald. Where did I get Chandler oh, from? Elsa Lanch Lanchester, you mean? Yeah, yes. Oh, <laughs> it's late, folks. It's late. <laughs> it's very late. We got day jobs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, for me, um, I adore Jack Lemon. I love Jimmy Stewart as well. Um, I love a lot of the things that he's done, but Jack Lemon is one of my absolute favorite actors of all time, and he has such range to be able to play so many different types of characters and he's he's delightful in this he really is he's mischievous um he's he's just got this peppy chirpy chappy kind of personality you know and and he's just great he's great i just love watching him kim noback uh, Novak, absolutely gorgeous lady, uh, lovely actress. I think she she's well cast. I think they are all well cast and play off of each other very well. God, there's that scene where she's holding the cat, which I'll, we'll get into later on with the cat. But mm -hmm. when she's holding the cat and she's staring at the screen, that that camera shady work in her eyes like i was actually being hypnotized myself watching this thing yeah like, this beautiful is. cat as well just such a lovely siamese and i love the name pie whack it and the funny thing about the name is that there is a modern horror movie called pie whack it and i've watched it on amazon prime uh, little uh horror movie and so when I saw, heard the name, I was just like, ah, it just, it just cracked me up. I, I haven't my heard it next. mentioned anywhere else. Yeah. I'm going to name my next cat, Pie Whack It. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, I had a Siamese cat. I should have named it Pie Whack It if I knew this movie existed back when we had our first cat. <laughs> oh, God. I've always been fascinated by Siamese cats. Mm -hmm. Ever since, I think it was the... I think it was in 101 Dalmatians. There were two Siamese cats. Yeah. Was that the one? Yeah. We are Siamese. Yeah, me, if, you if you please. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I always loved Siamese cats from that point forward. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And, and Bailey, he was a, because with Siamese cats, you have your points. You have your one yeah. point, two point, and three points. He was all three points. Oh, so he wow. was Black Point. He was, uh, um, I can't remember the, the three names, but he had all features in his, his fur and in his face. He was just a beautiful boy. Great cat. Yeah. Miss him. Miss my boy. Strong personalities as well. All cats yeah. are wonderful. Um, but I, I've i always been fascinated by that particular breed because they're, they're very, very unique. Cats are assholes too. Let's, let's well, that. you know, anybody who has that's cats knows they're assholes, assholes as well. <laughs> but we still love them. And that's why they rule the world. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's why they get waited on. <laughs> um, in that artifact store, the Jillian Holroyd African Oceanic um, you know, was... art store. <laughs> 
How Beautiful cool was story. that? Yeah. And it was in, um, it was set in Greenwich Village, which worked perfectly because Greenwich Village was, you know, was the perfect, was just such a cool place to have a wander around in. Yeah. And we get to see Elsa Channel earlier in the movie. And, uh, you know, what a treat she is. And then we learn that she's a witch right away. And she does a spell on James Stewart over the phone, which I thought was quite, quite, quite funny. Oh, picks up the phone. <laughs> yeah, like where he comes home and finds her in his flat. Yeah. And she's just like so matter of fact about it, you know, and then she, she's just like, oh, you know, in me time, you kind of like can understand Jimmy Stewart's point of view. I was sort of taking his side there. I was just like, excuse me. Uh, and who are you? Why are you in my flat? <laughs> and yeah, like you said, until those piercing eyes too, whenever she looked at James Stewart, I probably would have like ran out of the room. I'm like, yep, nope. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. Those eyes are too scary. Yeah, definitely. Very distinctive features for an actress, definitely. And um, I'm not a big James Stewart fan. I know it's mm. probably going against what a lot of people think, but I I, I find James Stewart dramatic stuff boring. Where yeah. his comical stuff is, is much more his his comical timing is perfect. You know, his his facial features, you yeah, know, the way he can deadpan stuff. And that's the James Stewart stuff that I really enjoy. Yeah, and the irony is he is kind of the straight man in this, but it's done with comic with some, you know, he navigates that very well for an actor. I think most people know him more for more serious roles or thriller roles like the Hitchcock stuff that he's done. But I I do like um, James Stewart. I love his voice. Um, he's he was um, he was excellent in this. I thought he was well cast. He's the actress that plays his fiance in the beginning was very good as well. And mm -hmm. I like how they set it up where they show, because that, that, that part I thought was important to the story. They show that his fiance isn't, isn't a sort of sweet, innocent girl who's going to be very cruelly harmed she's actually kind of a bitch yeah <laughs> you know and kim novak's character remembers her from school and she was kind of the one that would rat everybody out and she she just wasn't a very nice person and she still then then they start showing more of her personality and she is quite a cold um condescending type of a person and then the movie works a lot better the plot works a lot better because you don't have that sympathy for her if you had sympathy for her, it would be difficult. I don't think it would work as well. So I thought yeah, that was kind of like, well. Just, yeah, it's just, just kind of like the high school bully. Yeah, yeah, the snob. But Yeah, but Kim Novak's character sort of picked up on some of her weaknesses that you find out, you know, which is thunderstorms. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which, you know, when they're in that bar and they're doing the, the bongo drums really loud and the in the brass music and stuff really loud over her ears and stuff like that then the light starts flashing then there's mm -hmm. the scene where she's almost had enough and she gets up and jack lemon bellows in her ear <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> fucking hilarious <laughs> i almost spit out my coffee at work because <laughs> <was so funny. laughs> yeah it was great it was great it was called the zodiac club too i like the name of the club mm -hmm. And of course, the uh, he talks about this author that did a witch book or something, and he's in Mexico, and he would like to meet her. So Kim Novak, or meet him, and Kim Novak's character, I think, arranges that, or was it Elsa Lanchester's character? Which one? Or was, no? it cat, uh, was it the cat? One of them um, brought the, the author from Mexico over. If that was, was when hoping. Kim Novak was doing, she was doing the spell, but um, Elsa Lanchester was there with her and she picks a random, she picks a book and she rips off, which was 
massive cringe, but she rips off the dust cover and cuts out the picture of the author of the book and drops it in the bowl and burns it. And it's him that comes and it's ironically him that causes a lot of complication which is i liked the fact that that all sort of like worked into the plot so that's how i understood it yeah yeah that's right dude and um i mean elsa uh, lanchester's cackle what gives um, Elizabeth Selwyn's cackle a run for her money? You know, <laughs> Nobody beats Liz. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she was. She was. She had a great, um, a great laugh, and she was. She was just a great, another great comic actress. Really, the way she played it. And uh, three thirty-one forty-four of the movie, and I think I mentioned this earlier. I couldn't know that. Um, is holding um, Pie Wacket and they stare at the camera when James Stewart is talking about getting married and mm -hmm. she starts humming and uh, Pie yeah. Wacket starts purring loudly. I mean, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. and cool. What a purr on that guy. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And what, a, what a chill cat movie. because the way she yeah. was picking him up and holding him was just like. Yeah you know he was very chill i mean he didn't mind being picked up and shoved around and carried around on her shoulder and stuff some cats are like that but i was uh, i was just amazed broom. yeah <laughs> and then she whacks him with a broom <laughs> yeah i was like oh yeah, don't he do was, that he, he, he was a good cat well trained <laughs> yeah yeah which is if anybody if you if you're a cat person you know that's hard work <laughs> If it's possible at all. So yeah, amazing cat. And there was a scene where he, uh, James Stewart calls the, uh, or the uh, publishing stuff, Abracadabra Publishing the Department. I thought it was <laughs> quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then poor Ernie Kovac, his character looks like he's lost his mind because he doesn't know how he got there. One minute yeah. he's in Mexico and next to me and he's, <laughs> he's <laughs> at, um, the publishing place yeah he was funny always um pinching the alcohol in the office as well and uh, the group about uh, knowing witches when they were all in the room and he talks about how he can point out a witch and there are the witches are all looking at him going oh yeah how do you know that <laughs> he's <laughs> he's trying he's telling me he could just see them and stuff like that and they're all witches and he doesn't know it <laughs> i was quite shocked when Jack Lemon's character actually tells him that he's a witch. Yeah. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this is going to spectacularly backfire. Um, so he's a he's a little bit of a loose cannon, that character. Mm -hmm. But he, yeah, he's he's kind of like mischievous, I would call him. Yeah. Yeah. So if you wind him up, you don't know quite what he's going to do. Yeah, and he does get wind up a few yeah. times in this movie. Yeah. It's unpredictable. And he doesn't believe in falling in love. Which in yeah. this movie, you know, if anybody who doesn't know this movie, basically it's about a witch played by Kim Novak who falls in love with, with I don't can't remember what they called them in this movie, but in Harry Potter terms, they were what? They oh, were yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, so in if in a, it turns out in witch's lore in this movie, if she falls in love, she loses his power or loses her power. Yeah. So she and obviously ends up falling in love. And that crying scene that broke my heart. That it was did. so beautifully it, like it when she was. finally cries. Yeah. It was, I thought at first, it was very moving. Yeah. Yeah. I thought at first she was crying because well, I guess it was because uh, Pi runs away, and he runs away because she doesn't have her powers anymore. Yeah. And then but, when that tear shows up. Yeah. yeah, I was worried. The whole movie, I was worried about Pi Wacket. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. nothing better happened to Pi Wacket. Yeah, for some reason, I kind of thought he was getting run over by a car or something when he took off. I was terrified. House. Yeah, I was like, no, 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 don't do that. Spoil this movie for me. 
Yeah, there goes half the chat when you were over the cat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that we're out. Fuck this movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that crying scene, uh, it reminded me of the first crying scene in Cocoon. When um, Brian Dennehy's character, when all the, the energy is gone out of the pool, and he's in the pool, and you realize it's that the people that they've come back for is dying because all the old guys were jumping in the pool and they sucked up all the energy and he cries for the first time. Oh, I can't watch that. I can't watch that anymore because I it destroys me. I am an absolute floods of tears watching that. That's such a beautiful, beautiful movie. It's such a special movie. But oh my God, that scene. Yeah. And when Ernie is holding Rose... And he's like, you can do something for her. And he's like, I can't. She's already gone. And there's no power in the pool. And it's like, oh, my oh, God. I'm a blubbering mess at that. Yeah. Oh, I know. I can't watch that again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that's what made me think of when I saw Kim. Or, or Kim yeah, Dunga. it was. It was, was a really powerful, here. yeah, powerful scene. Really well done. I found an interesting little fact about the cat. Um, it said early in 1957, producers also launched a somewhat promotional search for Siamese cats to play Piwacket. According to one release, as many as 12 cats were needed to perform the number of stunts in the film. The primary cat used for the role in close ups was owned by animal trainer Frank Inn, who reportedly gave the cat to Kim Novak when he saw that she'd for formed a close bond with him. Piwacket's name was derived from the testimony given, given in a 17th century witch trial in England and referred to a witch's familiar. Cool. So, very cool. Yeah, my next cat's definitely going to be called Piwacket, and it's going to be a sign easier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling my wife that because she'd be totally holding me up for that because she wants <laughs> to have another animal. I'm like, ooh. Uh, <laughs> I know it's hard. It's hard when you uh, when you lose them, and then it's, it's it's an extraordinary act when you're ready, you know, to welcome another one. But we have, you know, we we've been through that many times, as many of us have, and uh, ours ours have all just. I think I think there's just a big flashing neon sign up there. <laughs> says, Go yeah. over there. They're nice. Um, the realization um, by Shep was hilarious when you realize that she was a witch. Yeah. It was quite a funny scene. Yeah, that was a good scene. And it was great because it it had it it built the tension really well because he obviously when he finally finally realizes it he just flies off in a rage uh, and tries to go back to his former fiance and then it's like the 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 he's he comes back to return something to her i think in the shop doesn't he at the end mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can see it, you know, you can see it. And he doesn't realize that she's no longer a witch, I think, right away. Yeah. Is that, did I remember that correctly? And then, yeah, yeah. And then she explains to him the, that she's, yeah. Well, he realizes because everything in the shop has changed. She's, yeah. she's changed the whole layout of the shop. And she, she, she even looks different as yeah. well. But she's wearing white instead of wearing the black. Yeah. Uh, in those black witch garments she was wearing, oh, my God, they were freaking gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Really nice, nice costuming in this as well, definitely. And then when they're at Bianca's shop, um, the doorbell, what she thought was the doorbell at first when they push it, and it goes, you're a fool. Who's a fool? Uh -huh. Turn out it's a bird. I thought that was quite hilarious. Yeah, oh, the bird was I great. Need yeah. I need a doorbell that says that. Yeah. <laughs> when I was working midnight, I wanted to have a doorbell that said, "Ring that doorbell one more fucking time." <laughs> 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 because, because we had 
when my when we were younger, my kids when they were younger, they had a lot of friends on our street. And with me working at midnights, I was trying to sleep. But all the kids would come over and want to play with our kids. So oh, I had yeah. one kid that he lived across the road. And uh, they were, well, like four or whatever. And he would come over and he'd ring the doorbell, ding, 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 ding. And one day I snapped. I opened <laughs> up the door and I'm like, who's ringing that motherfucking goddamn fucking doorbell? <laughs> and the kid just looks at me with wide eyes and takes off running. <laughs> <laughs> Traumatized for life. Little more fucking time, you little shit. <laughs> and I had to go over and apologize to the parents. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Which they were fine with because you know they knew. That well, yeah. It was a bit of a pain yeah. in the ass sometimes. <laughs> and that potion looked disgusting too. Ooh, that, yeah. Uh, I I did wanna. Mm -hmm. I was starting to lose patience, so I was just drinking. Okay. Yeah. And he was messing <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, the went on too. That went on a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but it still looked disgusting, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Excellent. broom part. I was waiting for a broom part to show up. And mm. then when he finally he turns, he's all pissed off at uh, Kim Novak's character. That, oh, uh, yeah. Bring, brings her that broom. <laughs> that was really mean. Yeah. That was that, that one hurt. You could see the hurt on her face as well. And then, of course, yeah. Shep shows uh, our pie shows up to uh, to save the day when he shows up at um, Shep's new office, and uh, he has to take her back to, or he takes pie back to. Yeah. So pie whack had actually fixed. He fixed it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was lovely. Yeah. So yeah, fantastic this is a delightful movie. movie. Yeah. In. Uh, I think I'll end up uh, finding a copy to own myself. You know, I'm not a big lovey-dovey kind of thing, but this one was quite charming because a witch is cool mm -hmm. cat. Mm -hmm. And also, well, that's uh, uh, Manchester, who I was so excited to see her in something else. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, there was something that I saw. Yes, uh, one final thing. Bewitched, um, the TV show that uh, many of us grew up with in the 70s as well. Bewitched creator Saul Sachs admitted that he drew on Bell, Book and Candle, as well as the earlier witch-themed I Married a Witch in 1942. Screenwriter Paul Wayne said he was pretty honest about the fact it, was a partic it wasn't a particularly original idea. So this movie actually partly inspired Bewitched. TV show Bewitched, which uh, you can kind of see. You can kind of see a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah. And if you watch this movie with um, I Am Married a Witch back to back, like as a double feature, you can really pick that up. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. There's another one maybe we should watch and discuss for next season. I Am yeah. Married a Witch. Yeah. That Sounds good. To talk about. Yeah. Cool. And, and with that, everybody. That is our show. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you for listening this season for our seven episodes this season. And um, we'll be back next season. And uh, looking forward to talking about some amazing movies. And um, these, these are always, I mean, I love just, the, you know, us both just sitting down, just chatting away about movies. It's being relaxed. I got a coffee in my hand. Is that it? Well, that's it. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing better than just like I can remember when I used to go to movies, and one of the most enjoyable parts of the movie was coming out of the movie and then going hanging out with your friends and just talking about it. You know, de, de you know just deconstructing it and talking about it. Um, so yeah, it, it's uh, it's very enjoyable. Definitely fun. And there are so many movies that we can um, cover in this. If, obviously, if anybody has any suggestions, please leave us those. And um, yeah. Yeah. yeah sky's really, the limit on this show. Yeah. Well, that's it. You know, we can talk about it in any film. And I've got lots of them um, that I have on my list that I want to talk about awesome. as well. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah, I've I've got a few written down. Um, 
but uh yeah well everybody we yep. will see you in the new year uh have a happy holiday um and uh merry christmas and uh we will see you guys next year 2024 can you believe it i can't Crazy. i can't i've stopped counting now yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's one yeah whatever want to stop getting old <laughs> yeah, exactly. Stop me getting old, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Bye bye. All right. Thanks, everybody.